What's up, Reefers? Today we're getting into a long anticipated video that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Uh, I apologize for the delay, but we're diving into it today. And what we're diving into is how I achieve an elevated pH with not much swing through caulk losser dosing. Caulk losser has been around for 30 plus years um, for a reason, it's proven and it has dramatic effects on your pH if dosed correctly. The importance of pH is converting that bicarbonate into carbonate, boosting those aragonite levels so your corals can calcify a lot quicker. Um, I know we're not supposed to chase numbers. If your alk's at seven, it's at eight, it's at nine, it doesn't matter as long as it's stable. It's all about stability in these things. But the one number I do chase, pH. Um, I don't let my tanks fall below 8.3. I'm shooting for 8.3 or above. Um, and I achieve that through caulk losser. So today we're going to jump into the video about how I go about doing my method uh, to achieve this. And I'm going to go through the mixing process, how I mix up the caulk losser, how I weigh it, um, and the process of dosing it. So with all that said, let's jump into this. jump into the details of this video um, I'm shooting this video one day after the one year anniversary of the passing of one of the most influential people in this hobby and industry Mr. Jake Adams so I just wanted to take a second and just say how much that man meant to me and such an influence to me I think about his wife Windsor and their son Reef uh, they're always in my thoughts um, and it's ironic that I'm filming this video today because Jake was a huge pH buff. Um, so, yeah, let's get into this pH video from Mr. Jake Adams. All right, let's do it. First thing we're going to do diving into this is going to open up my uh, pH graph chart on the Apex app. And we're going to take a look at that. So, first thing you want to look at is my average. I'm averaging an 8.52 pH in this system. My high is 8.62 and I'm running a low of 8.45. So you can see that's about a 1.5 swing, which is great. Um, you don't want to throw too many swings at your tank. You don't want a roller coaster. You want it to be as stable as possible. So I felt comfortable running this 8.52 average. Everything grows like crazy for me. Um, the acros are just bustling with new growth. And we'll take a look at some of those. All right, if you look at some of my acros in here, like this ARC firework acro, you could see all the new growth of the new little coralites all popping out here. They got that translucent color, almost looks like burnt tips, but no, that's new tissue, folks. Um, and I'm not lying that saying that all these little new tips came out overnight, they totally did. Um, if you look behind it at this, Montipera digitata, you can see the new growth all over every single tip of this structure. Um, and that is my magical caulk losser, which is just pure magic for your corals. You could see the advanced calcification and the new growth just rapidly occurring day by day by day. And your corals grow like crazy. All right. So the general rule of thumb for mixing up your caulk losser is going to be six grams per gallon, uh, which is about a tablespoon and a half, but I like to weigh it up so I'm precise on it. Um, so for today's uh, system, I'm replenishing a 15 gallon vat. Um, so I'm going to be mixing 90 grams of caulk losser uh, into that 15 gallons of RO water. Um, so before I play with calcium hydroxide, I like to put on gloves. Um, you should as well. So I will put these gloves on. Open up the caulk washer. So I use the Captivate Aquaculture calcium hydroxide uh, from the Reef Blueprint line. It is my go-to method. Um, my 
go-to call glosser of choice uh, based on the impurities, there's none. So we don't want to put impurities into our tank. So I will turn on my scale, put on my little container, tear it back to zero. Then I'm going to put 90 grams. And if you go a little bit over, totally fine. Uh, that's 93 grams right there. When you seal up your caulk washer, you want to make sure you get all the air out of it as possible. Atmospheric CO2 will compress the potency of your calcium hydroxide. So make sure it is fully sealed with all the air out of it. So on this system, for my caulk washer vat, I'm using an Innovative Marine 15 gallon Aqua Gadget Hydrofill Reservoir, um, which it has the handy drawer that pulls out. And I drill holes into the front of this drawer where I put my dosing lines in to get it as airtight as possible. And if you follow me around to the back side of it, I will show you here. So these models come in stock from the facility are open right here. So I actually cut a piece of glass on my man saw um, and silicone it to the back of this to make it as airtight as possible. Once again, at this here, CO2 will compress your pH. So you want to have it as sealed as possible, but not so airtight that it creates a vacuum. All right, so I got my calcium hydroxide all mixed up. That's about 90 grams. Uh, I'm going to pull out my dosing lines here that I drilled the holes for. I like to pull this drawer out all the way. Dump in the calcium hydroxide. Hopefully you don't drop your thing inside of there. Doesn't matter if you do. And then I start filling. All right. And after your RO is all filled up in there and your calcium hydroxide's inside, come over here and give it a good stir. And after I give it a good stir, I'll let it sit for about five, ten minutes and then come back and give it another good stir. All right, so the other thing you uh, want to factor into this equation is making sure your caulk washer mix is max saturated. Um, if you're mixing up six grams per gallon of RO, it should be max saturated. I like to double check. So I use a Milwaukee pH pen, uh, easy to calibrate, and you just dip it in and it shows you what's up. So I just dip this guy in there. Boom, 12.5. That's what we want to see. That means this mix is max saturated. Uh, if it's lower than max saturation, you're going to have to dose a lot more calcium hydroxide to achieve the same results. So just make sure it's max saturated. All right, so I'm putting my dosing lines back in, my pre-drilled holes there I drilled myself. Um, the other thing that you wanna do is your dosing lines in this vat. You don't want them to be all the way at the bottom. You want them to be about one inch um, above Above the bottom where that sediment is otherwise you're going to be pulling up slurry um, we're not team milk we're not doing slurry so we're just doing saturated lime water so you don't want the dosing lines pulling up that sediment from the bottom um, so just keep your dosing lines about an inch above the bottom and, uh, to prevent it from pulling up that sediment and it will clog up your dosing uh, vessels faster than than not all right, for this tank, this is a 50 gallon Innovative Marine Lagoon tank. Um, so I use a smaller vat for this. This is a six gallon glass jug. Uh, I believe they use these for making beer. 
Um, you can buy them with these nice little handles and rubber stoppers that have a little hole in the top that are perfect for dosing lines. Um, so for smaller systems, these work great. And um, as far as my dosing mechanisms, um, I am a fan of the Sentia Aqua Vitro dosing pumps. Um, these are really cool. You can snap off the cover on the sides um, and slide other, you just have to have a primary and then you could add on as many secondaries as you want. So you could have a plethora of dosing pumps all attached on one plug. Uh, I like the timing aspect of them. You could set a time frame of when you want the dosing to start. You could set intervals of how many doses you want to happen during that time frame. Um, and now you know my pump of choice for dosing the Kalkwasser. Now we're going to get into my dosing schedule. All right, so now we're going to get into talking about how we're going to dose this stuff. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Chris Meckley's method. Um, I do things a little bit different than Chris does. Chris doses based on evaporation rate. I dose based on alkalinity consumption. So we both do things just a little bit different, but we're trying to achieve the same results here. And that's not having a suppressed pH, running an elevated pH and consistent pH. Um, so I'm gonna bring up my dosing chart here for my Sentia Aqua Vitro dosing pump. As you can see, I'm putting 5,000 mils of Kalkwasser at night into this tank. Um, this is a 112 gallon system and it gets a gallon and a quarter of Kalkwasser per night. Now that almost matches my EVAP rate. Um, I still, it actually does match my EVAP rate and I still have to put about 15 mLs of alkalinity um, in here to maintain my out. Um, other systems in here, I don't match evaporate. I'm just trying to maintain a consistent alkalinity number. So I dose my Kalkwasser based on my alkalinity consumption. You can achieve that by dosing, testing, dosing, testing. Day by day, you increase your doses to figure out where you are, your consumption rate is happening. And once you get it stable after a few days of doing tests, and you find that stable mark, then you hit your point of the amount you need to dose every night. Um, my dosing all happens at night. So as soon as my lights go out at 8 p.m., I start dosing cough wasser um, until the lights come on at 10 a.m. So for 14 hours, I'm dosing cough wasser. And if you look at the uh, Aqua Vitro app, you see I'm doing 200 times during that time frame. So roughly every seven minutes, it's dosing about 25 mLs of Kalkwasser to the system. Combating that pH drop at night is gonna be very beneficial to combat that swing from your pH dropping down too low. So dosing every seven minutes, like I have set up into this app, um, really combats that dip at night. If you look at my apex chart on the pH graph, I'm only dropping down to like 8.42 at night, um, which is great. I don't have any reverse lighting schedule on this. Some people do that with refugiums to keep their uh, pH up at night through photosynthesis of having an algae reactor of some sort. Um, but I do it through Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser is magical. It really helps with the calcification of your corals. If you could create that stability, a really small window uh, of your pH swinging. I'm gonna show you every day the new growth, like what I see in this tank. Like I could see new coral lights just popping out on every acro colony left and right. Um, so once again, it's important to know how much caulk loss you're gonna be putting into your system each night. And like I said, testing your alkalinity adding, let's say you're starting with 400 mils and you test the next day, you were at 7.0 and the next day you were at 6.7, you know you need to up your dose. So then try 500 mils. If the day after that you're at 6.8, you're almost there. Let's try 600 mils. Um, up to that point where you're getting that 7.0 or whatever your number is consistent, say two, three,
the nail on the head of how much cough loss you need to dose to that system each night. And that's roughly going to stay the same until, until your corals are getting bigger or you're adding more corals. Um, and that's where testing is very important to test. Whatever you're putting into your tank, you really need to test for it. Um, overdoing it could be catastrophic. So having a good test kit, something that's reliable, um, is going to be beneficial to you to achieve this. Without testing, you're not going to achieve this. You're going to nuke your tank. Um, so yeah, me and Chris do things a little bit different, but we're trying to achieve the same things. We're trying to achieve happy, healthy corals uh, through running a non-suppressed pH and letting that natural calcification happen more rapidly than uh, um, than you would see without that pH boost. So with all that said, you guys kind of got a general understanding of the importance of pH in your tank. Um, how I go about dosing my cough washer to maintain that pH. Um, I hope you guys got a good general understanding of how I do this. I know it could be a little bit complicated. Um, always open up for questions. Yeah, pH is important. So let's keep it up and let's keep everybody happy and healthy in our tanks. All right, let's go team calcium hydroxide. And Jake, love you, buddy.